They got to do that for themselves. You can you can hold space for them. You can be an example for them. But ultimately, that's their responsibility. Nobody else's. And so we frustrate ourselves when we make ourselves responsible for other people, you know? I mean, in our children, we're just really here to teach. All right, so we're going to finish up this book. Like I said, I'm probably going to jump off like 12.50 so that I can um, change into my lunch outfit. Um, but we're going to talk about continuum of self-values. The continuum of self utilizes 11 numerical values or continuum of self-values, CSV to represent the full range of self-orientation possibilities. At the center of the continuum is a CSV of zero. The zero represents a hypothetical perfect balance of oneself and other orientation. The highest number to the left of zero is negative five, which represents codependency, a self-orientation that is defined by the, com the complete focus of the on the needs of others while neglecting one, one's own needs. The highest number to the right of zero is positive five, which represents one of the emotional manipulator disorders, a self-orientation defined by the complete focus on one's own needs at the exclusion of others. So, and this is a perfect example. Remember, positive and negative. In yin and yang, the feminine energy is often negative and the masculine energy is often positive. But we can truly have a great balance if we get to about, I think the book says about a number two or three on the scale, you know, like a woman can be at, a, at the negative two and a man can be at the positive two. This is him not being so self-centered and selfish and this is her not being overly giving um, to where she's not able to receive from him properly. So. You know, you just really want to heal your own. I'm trying to move this up some because my, this is really high and I didn't feel like bringing it down. But. All right. The highest, okay, we did that right. Mm -hmm. Exclusion of others. The self-orientation's progress in verifying degrees. Oh, excuse me. The self-orientation's progress in, ver in varying de degrees of severity, a negative or positive five is the most severe or pathological. The CSVs increase or decrease in a series of single digits, i.e. zero to negative five or zero to positive five. The closer the CSV is to zero, the more a person is able to give and take in a healthy manner when in a romantic relationship. The further from zero, the more a person adopts a relationship pattern of selflessness or selfishness. The zero value does not signify an absence of self-orientation. Instead, it represents a person who demonstrates an equal amount of self-care and other care when in a relationship. Now, I would really like to highly think of myself as that zero, but I absolutely know I'm probably about a two because I am not perfect in a relationship. Sometimes it is, you know, that I am so focused on me doing the things that I love to do that, yeah, I may forget to answer a text or, you know, like you just, especially when you've been single for so long, it's like, I don't know. It's just like a, I want to say like, probably like a lack of interest almost like, I really don't know what it is, but, you know, sometimes I can, you know. I mean, I would really like to believe that I'm this balanced person, but let's let's be honest with ourselves, right? Um, and I know that about myself, but, you know, I do strive to be the healthiest version of myself, and I do take care of myself. I am going to make sure, you know, that I am caring and making myself care a priority, and anybody that has a problem with that, then I don't continue. And that's a lot of times too why I'll be like, okay, I'm not I'm not about to do this because you're expecting more of me than you're willing to give to me and I'm not I'm I'm trying to I'm looking for balance right now, you know. Um 
The zero point, the middle of the continuum, represents an exact balance of love, respect, and care, care, LRC, giving, given and received. It is possible, but not common, in my experience, for a person to have a zero or neutral CSV. Although having a zero would be ideal, in reality, the vast majority falls somewhere on one side or the other of the continuum. In an effort to illustrate the full range of self-orientations, this author has included a list of general personality types that are typically associated with each of the continuum of self-values, CSVs. This list illustrates the full range of general personality possibilities according to the continuum of self-theory's self-orientation concept. This CSV list will provide a basic and general illustration for each of the 11 CSVs according to the continuum of self-theory. It is not intended to be used as a measurement tool. And so this is where it gets interesting. So you can see I got it all highlighted. Examples of each continuum of self-value, CSV. Negative five CSV, a codependent is completely absorbed with the love, respect, and care, LRC needs of others, while completely ignoring and devaluing their own. This category of individual is often powerless, unable, or unwilling to seek LRC from his romantic partner, his or her. A negative four CSV, a person with codependent tendencies, he is almost always focused on the LRC needs of others while only intermittently seeking to have his own LRC needs reciprocated or fulfilled. This person is able, albeit unmotivated, fearful and or inexperienced in seeking LRC from his romantic partner. He often chooses not to ask others to fulfill his LRC needs and he doesn't want to upset others or cause conflict. If asking for some semblance of LRC from his partner, he, do, he does so nervously and with distant feelings of guilt or neediness. A negative three CSV, a person who identifies with his caring and giving nature, he is predominantly focused on the LRC needs of others while often diminishing, delaying, or excusing away the fulfillment of his own needs. This person's identity and reputation is fused with his helping and caretaking nature. He is typically in relationships in which there is an imbalance between his partner's and his own LRC needs giving much more LRC to his partner than receiving. This individual is capable of setting boundaries in relationships while also asking for what he needs. However, he tends to feel guilty or needy when setting such boundaries or when asking for help from others. A negative two CSV, one involved in, relation, one, one involved in relationships is in which his caretaking identity is valued and appreciated, but not exploited. This is me, a negative two CSV. I don't want to be exploited because I enjoy, I do, I enjoy taking care of my people. I enjoy cooking. I enjoy, I, I enjoy that stuff, you know? So, but my, my, my caretaking has been exploited. Um, he enjoys relationships with others in which he provides ample amounts of LRC without one. Oh no, I want equal risk. Well, no, because I understand that it's sometimes it's eighty twenty. Sometimes, you know, it, it it varies as long as I'm not giving the eighty and they're only giving twenty. You know, that's that's kind of like my thoughts. Okay, so. He provides ample amounts of LRC without wanting equal amounts reciprocated. He is able to ask for what he wants or needs from others, although it's slightly uncomfortable doing so sometimes. He is comfortable with a partner who needs more LRC than he is willing to give in return. He is able to set boundaries and ask for what he needs when the LRC balance goes beyond his comfort level. He might experience mild feelings of guilt or neediness when asking his partner to meet his own LRC needs as much as possible. He avoids individuals who are narcissistic, exploitive, or manipulative. This is so me right now, a negative two. A negative one CSV, a person with a healthy balance between loving, respecting, and caring for self and others. He typically seeks life experiences and relationships in which he is able to satisfy his own LRC needs. He tends to participate and appreciate relationships that are based on a, oh, well, this might be me on a reciprocal and mutual distribution of LRC. Although he derives meaning and happiness, yes, okay, maybe this one is me. 
Although he derives meaning and happiness when helping and caring for others, he does not tolerate a selfish or self-centered romantic partner. He often enjoys caring for others, but does not identify himself as a caretaker or helper. He does not experience guilt or feelings of neediness when asking for, well, I think I'm like in the middle. I'm going to say I'm a one and a half because sometimes I do feel, still feel guilty um, for asking, you know, for my needs to be met. Um, and I know that that has a lot to do with my childhood trauma. I know that about myself. And, you know, this is why it's important for you to know you, you know, and know why you're triggered or, you know, and, and, and it's, it's necessary to have a partner that you feel safe and secure with and discussing things, you know, and that's why it's important for me to, to build a friendship because I need to build that trust because I have had my trust broken so many times, you know, and taken advantage of. So that's me personally, though. Okay, so the zero CSV, a person who participates in relationships where there is an equal distribution of LRC given and received. He easily asks for what he needs from his partner while being open to his partner's LRC needs. With his LRC balanced relationships, he can easily fluctuate between being the recipient and giver of LRC. That's an ideal spot, right? But that's not the normal. You want to be a negative one or a positive one or a negative two, well, I'm gonna say a, a negative one or a positive one. A positive one, a, C, a, a positive one CSV, a person with a healthy balance between loving, respecting, and caring for self and others. He tends to participate and appreciate relationships that are based on a reciprocal and mutual distribution of LRC. This individual values personal and professional goals and ambitions, which he confidently pursues. Although he derives meaning and happiness from the pursuit of his own goals and ambitions, he is also cognizant of the necessity to love, respect, and care for his romantic partners. He effortlessly provides LRC to his romantic partner when necessary or requested. He may identify with both the role of a caretaker or helper while wanting to fulfill his own goals and ambitions. I actually like that one too, because I am, you know, I am ambition, ambitions. I am pursuing my goals, but I'm, I'm also in, comfortable in the role of caretaking. I think I'm more of a caretaker and helper and I pursue my goals, you know. But I do enjoy, I enjoy, you know, cooking cooking for other people, you know, like, and, and doing different recipes. Like, I make so much, and it's like, man, if I had somebody that, you know, when I was dating that man in 2019, he would eat up everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had enough. Like, I would, I would make dinner for him, my daughter, and then he had enough for lunch, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I enjoy that. But I also enjoy being ambitious and pursuing my goals, you know, so... A positive CSV, a person who prefers to be involved in relationships in which the pursuit to fulfill his own ambitions, desires, and goals is encouraged and supported. In a romantic relationship, he actively seeks attention, appreciation, and affirmation. Although he is a go-getter and may be consumed with getting the spotlight, he is willing and able to fulfill his partner's needs. He is neither explorative nor selfish. As an individual who is more oriented toward his own LRC needs, he periodically forgets about the iniquity of LRC distribution in the relationship. He responds favorably and non-reactively when his partner asks for higher levels of LRC. Although he can be comfortable in a caretaking role, he doesn't maintain it. A positive three CSV, a mildly selfish and self-centered individual, he is predominantly focused on the LRC needs of his of self while often diminishing, delaying, or excusing away the fulfillment of his partner's needs. This person's identity and reputation is fused with his need for attention, validation, and recognition. He identifies with the persona of the go-getter and success-driven individual. He is typically in relationships where there is an imbalance in the distribution of LRC needs, expecting or taking more LRC excuse me, than giving. If confronted about the LRC in inequality, he may get defensive, but will be able to make corrections. He can modulate or control his self-centered and seemingly selfish attributes. Although he may be perceived as self-consumed and self-centered, he is willing and able to love, respect, and care for his partner. He just needs frequent reminders. A positive for CSV, a narcissistic individual. This individual is absorbed and preoccupied with the LRC needs of self while rarely seeking to fulfill the LRC needs of others. He comes across as being entitled, self-absorbed, and self-centered. 
as he is driven to lack LRC from others while giving very minimal amounts of the same in return. He is comfortable with the LRC disparity, believing his needs are more important than his partner's. Although this person is over, overtly narcissistic, he is still able to give nominal levels of LRC to others. If confronted about the LRC inequities, he will characteristically get angry and defensive and is quick to justify his actions. He, however, does not experience a narcissistic injury or exhibit narcissistic rage when confronted. And then the positive five CSV, an emotional manipulator, unable and unmotivated to love, respect, and care for others. He, he is consumed with fulfilling his own LRC needs with no intention of reciprocating. He has great difficulty in, exhib in exhibiting empathy, unconditional positive regard, or love. When he does give LRC to others, it is typically conditional, with strengths attached. He is not able to comprehend or accept his pathological le levels of narcissism. When confronted about the LRC imbalances, he will often strike back with either direct or passive aggression. The continuum of self is a linear representation of a person's self-orientation lower negative and lower positive values typically indicate an elevated level of relational and mental health and emotional manipulators too because i've been guilty of this um with passive aggressive because they're not comfortable in speaking with other people about how they're feeling so they will you know like, especially like with uh, social media they will post you know passive aggressive posts like they're not comfortable with sharing their feelings or talking to you directly so they'll post things and expect you to uh, you know to expect you to to think that it's reflected to you and so like you know i used to get offended at that and i used to do passive aggressive stuff too i'm gonna be honest i used to do passive aggressive stuff and i used to get offended by it but now in this space that i'm in now it's like if he ain't say it to me directly, then he can't be talking to me, right? I'm not doing the passive aggressive stuff no more. I don't care if it's in anger or in love. If somebody is posting something and saying, oh, I love you, I feel this way about you, but you're not directly saying it to me, then you can't be talking to me. If somebody posts something that's passive aggressive in anger, saying I'm this, I'm that, if you ain't say it directly to me, then you can't be talking to me. You know, whereas before, I would take offense to it. No, I don't. Because I know you're not talking to me because you didn't say it directly to me. You know? And that's why they're very afraid of actually expressing their feelings or telling people how they feel. So they use passive-aggressive tactics to do that. Um, so, yeah. The, the continuum of self is a linear representation of a personal self-orientation. Lower negative and lower positive values typically indicate an elevated level of relational and mental health. And I want to say this, too, when I said that I, I see myself on the positive one and the negative one, that's because that's a balance, right? We are both positive and negative. And even in a relationship, those roles are going to switch. Some days your partner, you know, like I said before, a negative is, is the feminine, right? Which is the, I think, yin is the feminine energy. I believe anyway, yin is the feminine energy. Um, let me look real quick. Yeah, yin is the feminine energy and yang is the masculine energy. So feminine is known as negative and masculine is known as positive but you have an equal balance of that and some days because especially when a man is healthy some days he's gonna want to be in that feminine energy he's gonna be he's gonna want to be nurtured and taken care of right but it, it doesn't always happen like that but you, and that's probably the 80 20 like i'm 80 percent, and my chart shows that i'm 80 percent feminine energy I'm 80%. I have 80 points on my feminine energy chart. So I need a masculine who's 80% masculine um, because that will give us the balance. And then on the, when he's not, when he's in his, needing to be in his feminine energy, then he's going to be the, the a, he's going to be the 20 in the feminine and I'm going to be the 80 in the masculine. 
You get that? That that's kind of how it and 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 it fluctuates back and forth. But the balance usually is he he no no that's not how it go. I'm eighty percent feminine, right? Yeah, so I need an eighty percent masculine, and then my twenty percent is the masculine, and his twenty percent is the feminine, right? So whatever, I don't even know what I'm talking about, but it, it's something like that, or I figure it out and then I tell y'all later, but. At any rate, I will be able to provide for him on his days where he's needing to be nurtured and taken care of, and he's in and he's a, he's in his emotions, right? And I have to have that balance within myself. And so, when you're a healthy person, you have that balance of positive and negative, right? Because you're not overly caregiving, you're not overly one thing, you're not overly another, you know. Um, and that's the balance, that's the equal balance. So um, conversely, higher negative and higher positive CSVs typically indicate lower levels of relational and mental health. To illustrate mildly others and mildly self-oriented individuals, a negative two and a positive two CSV pairing will represent two healthy people who when paired in a romantic relationship would create a healthier, mutually loving, respectful, and caring relationship that a relationship comparison um, than, than a relationship compromising of a negative four and a positive four CSV. And so that's what I had said earlier. That's what I've been saying in this. Um, from my remembrance of this book, a negative two and a positive two is a healthy relationship versus a negative five and a positive five or negative four and a, ne and a positive four. Um, the lower CSV couple is able to ebb and flow in the way they approach their LRC needs. And this is why, so on my journey, I have encountered men who don't want to communicate, right? I don't, I don't want to say that I was at a, a two at that point. I probably was more of a three, but I was saying, you know, like you, you know, you just going no contact or just going you know just like disappearing like can we conversate about that <laughs> you know what i'm saying like can we have a conversation so that we can so that we're meeting each other needs you know and i know i wasn't at where i am today i probably was like a negative three i guess i don't know but you know it's very important to have somebody that you can conversate with so that you can create that ebb and flow because it's not going to be perfect, right? A healthy relationship is not a perfect relationship. It's just a relationship that works. Like you're willing to make it work. You're willing to talk to each other. You're willing to sit down before you even have sexual intimacy and talk about needs, expectations, um, top belt, you know what I'm saying? The stuff that you're not, that are non-negotiable. You know, like you can have this conversation with a healthy person versus a, a person who's stuck in their own ways. You know, you, you, you have a person that's willing to, you know, grow with you. Because that's what relationships are. They're about growth and healing. They're not about, you know, yeah, you're going to have fun and, and adventures and stuff like that. But I think a lot of people get into relationships thinking, oh, this is just going to be the time of my life. And no, you, you got to be able to ebb and flow with that, that person, you know and talk about what's going on, you know? Um, but the lower CSV couple is able to, ebb, oh, ebb and flow, I said that. Moreover, the lower CSV partners are able to ask for what they need without causing resentment or conflict in their relationship. Despite a mild level of self-orientation and equality, both partners are able to give the other the amount of LRC that they need and desire. This is a healthy relationship. In this book, the term stable is used as a quantitative descriptor of a relationship. A stable relationship is resistant to breakup. An unstable relationship is likely to either not go beyond the initial stages or will likely end when conflict or discord is present. Stable does not represent qualitative elements of a relationship, like whether or not it is considered healthy or dysfunctional. According to the continuum of self theory, a relationship is considered stable when the two individuals have inversely matched opposite self-orientations. In other words, relationship stability is achieved when the negative and positive CSVs of each individual equals a zero sum, a zero sum relationship. Describes this quantitative state of relationship stability. 
To illustrate a moderately others self-oriented individual, a negative three CSV is likely to form an emotional, stable, and lasting relationship with a person who is moderately oriented toward their own needs. A positive three CSV. Therefore, the negative three and the positive three CSVs equal a sum, a zero sum relationship, one that is balanced and stable. The zero sum relationship <clears throat> is not a qualitative representation of mental health. In actuality, the mental health of a relationship is directly proportional to the degree of the partner's negative or positive CSV values. Healthier relationships are comprised of partners who share inversely matched lower or mild CSVs. With lower matching CSVs, a couple is likely to want is likely to want and be able to participate in a give and take process. Although one partner is more oriented toward the needs of others and the other is more, self, is more oriented toward the needs of self, both are able to be reciprocal and mutual in the relationship. It should be noted that there is a range of healthy zero-sum relationships. As there is a rich diversity in the manner in which CSV matched healthy individuals relate to one another. Conversely, unhealthy or dysfunctional relationships are composed of partners who share inversely matched higher CSVs. The matching of higher inverse CSVs result in a disproportionate exchange of LRC, given and received. Clearly one person, the emotional manipulator, is getting all the LRC while the other, the codependent, is giving it. The following vignette illustrates a healthy relationship with compatible self-orientation. A psychologically healthy stay-at-home mother who loves to volunteer <laughs> married a psychologically healthy and stable corporate executive who with the support of his wife works long hours to build his stature and reputation in the family business. The wife, ha the wife has a CSV of negative two and the husband has a CSV of positive two. With the inverse CSVs, they both feel loved by the other and participate in a mutually and reciprocally loving relationship. They are happy and secure in their relationship. By contrast, the following vignette illustrates an unhealthy sum relationship, unhealthy zero sum relationship. A codependent man with a CSV of negative five is married to a woman with narcissistic personality disorder and a CSV of plus five. The codependent husband is deeply insecure, needy, and compliant. He reluctantly agreed to stay home and raise the children while his narcissistic wife and unsuccessful salesperson insisted on being the family's sole provider. Because of his fear of en enraging his overly sensitive and defensive wife, he avoids confronting her about her selfish and rigid role expectations. He therefore suppresses his resentment and anger for her and complies with his wife's narcissistic demands. As a plus five narcissist, the wife will not even consider his needs unless they make her feel better about herself. If confronted about her narcissism, she will react harshly and even punitively to her codependent husband. This couple will stay together despite their dysfunctional marriage. Neither would dare leave the other as they are equally insecure and afraid of being alone. Matching or compatible continuum of self-values can be characterized into three relationship groups. And I'm going to stop there because I got to get off. Um, and tomorrow we will um, do, um, we will finish. We'll finish. We'll keep on going. I'm making this a series on my YouTube channel um, because, you know, I talk about a lot of stuff, right? And a lot of people may not believe what I'm saying. It's okay, I don't care. But a lot of what I create and the workbook that I created is really based off of this information and me learning and growing on my journey and you know, realizing, hey, I'm the codependent. Well, why am I, you know, starting to ask myself these questions? And that's what the, the workbook does, you know, why? You know, I think the first question is, um, how do I determine my self-worth? And is that fair? And when I first started this journey, I determined my self-worth by what others thought, you know? I, I twisted myself inside out to be who others wanted me to be and I quickly realized that still wasn't enough. You know, so at this point in my journey, it's like, I'm not twisting myself. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm here to do. And I know that. 
Um, I'm here to be a writer. I'm here to share my wisdom and to help others along on their journey. And until that partner comes in that understands that I work from home and this is what I do, um, that I'm not going out and getting a regular job, that this is what God has told me to do, then I'll continue doing this. You know, I mean, this is what I'm going to continue to do anyway. You know, I, 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 I work from home. This is what I do. I'm not going out to get a job. I'm going to keep doing this thing until it starts to really bring in the revenue. That's it. So I need a supportive partner in my life and someone who is okay with, you know, me being at home, taking care of home, doing the things from home while I'm working on my business. And he's out, take you know, working in the field or whatever. So we'll start tomorrow. I gotta go. I thank y'all for being here. I love y'all. Thank y'all. Go out. Have an awesome, amazing, and beautiful day. From my heart to yours, as always, namaste.